Gary, you always have all sorts of little tricks that you do. Tricks? Um, yeah, you got a bunch of them. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> what did you okay. bring today? Allergens, being in a different climate. I mean, short of being in Lake Tahoe or the Windward Pacific for the beautiful air, what, is there anything we can do if we get hit by a wacky air that takes away our, our pipes from us? Do you have any clues? The, the only way to deal with any problem like that is, is heat and moisture. Moisture. Yeah, that's, I mean, allergies are the, are, are the bane of the singer's existence. It's not, you know, because when you have an allergic reaction, the cords swell and they don't vibrate properly. It's a, also, too, flying in airplanes is, is, you know, when you fly, your cords swell slightly. So it's always, a, it's always a challenge to sing on the same day that you fly because the cords are slightly swollen, which affects the, the, their vibration. Give yourself a day. Right, exactly. And also, but, you know, also too, you know, again, if you do these exercises in your lower register, it will help you with allergies because what, what, what does an exercise do? It generates blood flow, which reduces swelling. So doing these exercises, oh, it really, you hear my voice drop a little bit? It really opens up your throat. But, I, but if, you're, if, you're dealing, if you're doing it that way, I wouldn't I would avoid singing high notes, just the low notes. In many years past, I remember there were different exercises to help us with voice and breathing. They'd have us lie down and sigh or yawn a lot. Do you have suggestions to get us into the better mood of, or better position of preparing our voice to shoot way in the back? Because I know that's, that was one of the early things that I had to go through when we were doing a younger you know, head voice to get us to throw it to the back. We did sighing or lying on our back or well, yawning, breathing. What do you suggest to prepare us? I would suggest not lying on your back and not yawning or sighing. No, okay. That's the, <laughs> All right. that's the worst thing you can do because oh. it does the opposite. Anything okay. that causes the larynx to rise is, 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 is not advantageous. So, ha, ah, goes up. What the, and also, too, this preoccupation with breathing is, is a total misconception. So that's How many here have heard this concept, sing from the diaphragm? Who's heard that concept? Yes. Right. Now, would, would it amaze you to realize that when you sing, you don't use your diaphragm? Would that surprise you? The diaphragm is only engaged when you breathe in. It drops. When you breathe out, which is when you sing, it's totally disengaged. So even if you wanted to sing from it, you'd be in trouble if, if you tried. So that whole concept is a, is a bogus concept. On top of that, breathing does not control your voice. Your vocal cords control the breathing. So if I go, oh, what's happening is the cords are closing, and it's controlling the release of the breath. So what is the, what is the determining factor in that is how strong the cords close and how efficiently they release the breath. It's not the breath itself. It's the cords controlling the breath, like a balloon. Releasing the lips of the balloon, you make the, you make the noise. So the stronger, more coordinated the vocal cords are, the more breath you have. So the idea of so focusing on breath is another nonsensical idea. Do you think that actors and singers should, should use the system the same way? Yes, without a doubt. A lot of voice teachers have said things like, lift your soft palate. What do you think about stuff like that? The soft palate is lifted when, you, if, if you put it, when your larynx drops, the soft palate drops rises automatically. On the other hand, when this goes up, the soft palate drops, the opposite of what you want. So the way you, the way you lift your soft palate is by singing back and down. What you're hearing is the soft palate rising. It's all because this is dropping. Um, when you have to do a lot of screaming, which is obviously not singing, um, any hints for not wrecking your voice if you have to like scream all day? Yes. Very subtle way, keep your larynx a little lower. Look, for example, if I were to go, hey, hey, right, I'm consciously dropping it slightly. But if I go, hey, this goes up. So you're saying keep, just keep your, right. keep so everything open. You got to do it in a way where we're disguising what you're doing. Right. You don't want to go, hey, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. But, but, but there's a, you know, what I mean? but there's a way of doing it where you keep, where it, it, you're pushing down slightly on top of it because again, when the larynx rises, that's when the problems begin. Because when the larynx rises, the cords make contact and they irritate each other and nodules and hoarseness, all that sets in. Sometimes they have to do a long scream if somebody's 
you know, falling from a height and, you or, just, you know, virgins. You have to train, you have to habitually, you have to train the habit of when you're screaming to keep the larynx slightly lowered and it'll save your voice.